What's up YouTube? This is Nick with Scent Remix, back with another video. Today's video is all about five from my collection that I feel like are criminally underrated. They're not talked about enough. And they definitely deserve more love. Stay tuned. So I guess you could say this video today was inspired by my last video, Seven Cheapies for Life, because two of those actually find themselves on this list. I guess I just got to thinking about the fact that they're, you know, they're just really not talked about a whole lot in the fragrance community, and they really deserve to be. So let's get started with the list. So let's uh, begin with this one here. This is Robert Graham Fortitude. Robert Graham, of course, is a designer house. They make some great uh, clothes, especially their shirts for men. I love those. Um, as far as fragrances go, they just got the three. They've got Fortitude, Courage, and Valor. Now, of those three, I only have two. I have this one, and I have Valor, which I really feel like are the best of the three, with this one being number one. Presentation on this is just superb, especially the larger bottles. Now you'll see the top here has like the ram's head. The larger bottles are a little bit more ornate. They have the ram's head actually sitting on top, which is really cool. I'd love to have those in my collection. But uh, the side of the cap there, it's got kind of a steampunk motif. It's got the, uh, the sticker on the front that's kind of uh, paisley. It says Robert Graham. But uh, yeah, nice presentation. As far as the scent itself, this one gets compared, I hear, to like Dolce & Gabbana, the one. I don't really get that. If I were to compare it with any other fragrance, I think I, it comes a little bit closer to Bentley for Men Intense because it has that uh, boozy quality to it. Yes, it is a tobacco-based fragrance like Dolce & Gabbana, but I think that's where kind of the similarities end. This one has just three notes. It has the tobacco, it has patchouli, and it has tonka bean. But yeah, there's just uh, there's something else there in this one that kind of gives it that, uh, that boozy vibe. Uh, very nice for your cold weather. I was able to wear this quite a bit last winter. And it's just very nice the way that this one just kind of floats around in the air when you're outdoors. So if you haven't given this, this a shot, this one definitely deserves a lot more attention. It seems like all the attention is focused on Bentley for Men and Tent, but this one is just as good. All right, so next on the list, also a designer house. This is Vince Camuto, and this particular one is Vertu. So again, very nice presentation, love the bottle. Of course, it is a fingerprint magnet, but not as bad as some. But it's a very nice, heavy bottle. The scent, wow. This one, every time that I wear it, I'm just like surprised anew at how good this is. And just the fact that nobody is really talking about it. I've posted about this one several times on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, don't really get a lot of comments of, of people that have tried it themselves, and I really don't see anybody else posting about it, which just really, really shocks me. This is a very fresh, lively, just very clean scent. Um, I really enjoy the, the notes of uh, papyrus, peppercorn in this one. This is considered to be a leather fragrance and yes you do get a lot of the leather but I think it's kind of overtaken with all of those fresher uh, ingredients there like the uh, the papyrus and the peppercorn but very nice whenever I wear this I get tons of compliments it never fails so it's a good one to check out if you haven't already it's just the one of many um, from Vince Camuto but I really think that this is the best of their collection so this is one that I did mention in the last video, and it is Vera Wang for men. This one to me, um, I, I kind of uh, talked about it in the video. This has sentimental value to me because it was gifted to me by my mom years ago. And so I've always had a bottle of this in my collection. I always try to keep one because it's just such an enjoyable fragrance. 
This is a spicy, oriental, woody fragrance. Uh, but what really shines in this one is the note of yuzu that just gives it that fresh, zingy quality. Yuzu, if you're not uh, familiar, is an oriental citrus fruit that uh, was used a lot during the 18th century for its aromatic properties. They would actually, they would cut up the yuzu and like just have it floating in the bath. Um, or they would add the, the oil to, to their bath. So um, yeah, it's a very well-known ingredient. It's used in a lot of fragrances like, um, you know, Issey Miyake's uh, Le Dessé Pour Homme. Um, fabulous in that, uh, that fragrance. And it is excellent in this one as well. I mean, this was Will Smith's signature scent, so I hear, for like years. I don't know if it still is. But I mean, if Will Smith loved it, I mean, it, that's got to be saying something, right? Uh, but you can pick this one up fairly inexpensively. In fact, all of these on, on the list are fairly inexpensive. You can pick them up, in fact, at the online discounters. Um, pretty reasonable. Polo Ralph Lauren, for the most part, does get a lot of attention. Uh, but mainly for a lot of their other fragrances. Like, of course, Polo Green is a classic. It's been around forever. People still really love that one. But uh, very seldom do you hear the signature collection talked about. Now, I'm talking about, like, this one here, Signature Leather. They have a Signature Cashmere and also a Signature Oud. I don't have the other two. I would love to have them in the collection, but I absolutely love this one. This is such a nice wearable leather. And I say wearable because a lot of people have problems with leather fragrances just because of the fact that, you know, some are a little bit rougher to wear than others. Um, like your Tom Ford Tuscan leather. I've got another in my collection, Molten Brown Russian leather. So they're your more rougher leathers. And they're, they're not going to be appreciated by everyone, so you have to be really careful of who you wear those around. Not this one. This is just such a smooth, creamy leather. It's, uh, the leather is really aided by the honey, by the saffron, so it just gives it this very sweet, um, very creamy quality. And it is just so easy to wear, so versatile. So it's, it's great for just about any occasion. You can wear this to the office and be just fine with it. You know, in fact, I really feel like this is one that could get you some compliments instead of complaints. Um, but it's also, it could be a date night fragrance as well. I just think this is very nicely done and it definitely deserves more attention. All right, so last but certainly not least, we come to this one. This too was featured in my last video, Seven Cheapies for Life. And it was uh, from a house that I am really unfamiliar with. Uh, but um, in coming across this one, I was just very attracted to the scent profile. Thought it would be one that I would enjoy. And um, the presentation also is very nice on this one. And this is Korloff, No Ordinary Man. Again, uh, kind of a fingerprint magnet, but a very nice bottle. I love the way that the side is done there. Very heavy. But uh, the scent itself, I was really pleasantly surprised with this one because even though it is a leather fragrance, which should come as no shock to you guys that have been watching my videos, to know that I am very attracted to leather fragrances. But even though that's the case, this one almost comes across like a blue fragrance, which again is shocking because it doesn't have any of the ingredients that a normal blue fragrance has, like your Ambroxans, your Ozonic notes, aldehydes, aquatic notes, anything like that. You compare it to like a Blue de Chanel, really the only thing that this has in common note-wise with Blue de Chanel is I think like the pink pepper and the patchouli. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you picture in your mind a Blue de Chanel, you're, you know, you're, you're going down the Blue de Chanel highway, but uh, then you, uh, you take an exit in a, a much um, lighter, more refreshing um, direction. Um, that is what you get with this one. And I think the, the big difference with this one is the fact that, 
you know, even though you, you do have that feel, you've got the added elements of like vetiver in this, you've got star anise, um, you've got some citruses, and you've also got some, uh, some spicy elements there as well, and, and some hazelnut. So it's almost like you get the best, best of both worlds. You've got a lot of depth and substance to this one, but at the same time, it maintains this light, airy quality. The performance on this is excellent, and that's why I am so happy that I found a fragrance like this because I've got Blue de Chanel EDP in my collection, and I like the scent, but I just don't get the best performance from that. And it doesn't even smell on my skin the way that it smells on others. I've got a friend that wears it, and it just smells so good on him and on me. It's just, eh. So I'm a little disappointed with that, especially with how much I paid for Blue de Chanel. But this, on the other hand, for the price point and the performance that you get, along with that great scent profile, this is also, it's got an elegance to it. Um, that could make this very versatile. This could be a very, um, this could be your signature scent, but it could also be a nice date night scent or even a special occasion scent as well. So great one if you have not tried it. Well, that will do it for this video. Again, the whole purpose of this one was just to kind of shed some light on a few of these fragrances that just seem to have fallen through the cracks a little bit. But uh, they're such great fragrances, and in some cases, they're just as good, if not better, than some of these others out here that are, are receiving all the hype. So uh, check into them. Hopefully, this has uh, inspired you a little bit to, uh, to look into a few of these. And um, as always, appreciate the support. Thanks for stopping by. And until the next video, take care. I'll see you later.